437 in your hymnal, 437. Since the Savior found me, pardon all my sin. 437, let's all stand together as we sing on that first together. Since the Savior found me, pardon all my sin. I have had the joy and living hope within. Gone is all the shame and sorrow of the past. There underneath the precious blood of Christ and love. Condemnation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. I'm saved, saved, saved. Saved, saved, saved. I love him more, he saved. Saved, saved, saved. I know his mighty charm. He saved and keeps his sanctified me by his heart. Let's sing that last like we mean it. Since the Savior found me. Good singing tonight. Good to see you in church, and I uh, hope you had a good day today. Uh, ladies, did you get treated well today? I hope you did, and uh, we, uh, Andy came over, and we cooked some steak for uh, Mrs. Slaybaugh and Mrs. Slaybaugh, and uh, for Kathy and Nikki, and uh, gave them a steak dinner for Mother's Day, and uh, baked potato and broccoli with cheese, and I'm glad it's once a year, and I uh, thought, wow. I kind of like coming home and dinner's ready for me. It's a uh, it's different deal when you got to make it. And uh, they, uh, we had a good time and uh, appreciate, appreciate so much our mothers and our wives. And uh, we, we hope you ladies had a wonderful day. And uh, thanks for being back in church on Sunday night. Good to see you here. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for a wonderful uh, morning this morning and for meeting with us and speaking to our hearts. Lord, thank you for a day set aside to honor our mothers and Lord I pray that it wouldn't just be one day a year but Lord we are thankful there's a day we can focus and we can take that time to express our gratitude and our thanks uh, Lord I pray that you'll meet with us now this evening I ask you Lord to speak to our hearts give us what we need here on this Sunday evening and the second Sunday of May in 2015 in Jesus name we ask it amen, amen. all right you may be seated would you turn with me in your hymnal to number 333? Excuse me, 333, the lily of the valley. He's a bright and morning star. On that first together, I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily Nothing now. 
right, good singing this evening. Now, some announcements. Uh, this is the final week as we head into Country Fair this Saturday, and uh, so we got to really focus in and uh, get the job done now. I saw, um, uh, I got a call about 4 o'clock, I think it was, from Harry Peterman, and uh, he's not here yet, but uh, he had a thousand flyers that he's putting out today. Uh, he said he's going, if he sees a crowd anywhere, he just stops and goes out and starts passing them out to them. And uh, anywhere he finds people, he's giving them away. And uh, that's, the way, that, that's what it's going to take, right. just right. efforts like that that will really do a great job. And so uh, <clears throat> that will put us right up about 10,000. So we got about halfway there and uh, five days to get the rest of them out, all right? So uh, don't, don't think someone else will do it. Okay, everybody, we need all hands on deck, okay? So help us out and uh, get some flyers checked out with you when you leave tonight and uh, just get them done, okay? And uh, do this. Tomorrow, uh, set your alarms or set your clocks for 11.45 a.m., will you please? That is our bus inspection, all right? And I tell you, Brother Taylor, Brother Campbell, uh, others have just worked tirelessly uh, on that bus. It is... If, if there's anything not right with it, we can't, it, it, we haven't figured it out. Uh, it is just in tip-top shape. It has been cleaned inside and out, and uh, you see the rims painted. I mean, it is uh, lettered everything. Uh, it is uh, all we know to do to get it to pass, but tomorrow morning, 11.45 will be the inspection. So I uh, pray for that. Brother Taylor will be taking that up, and uh, let's pray that that will sail through. Uh, we need that bus for Saturday, okay? <clears throat> so let's be in prayer for that tomorrow, all right? Thanks for those of you who donated the, or saw Brett about the coolers. I think he's got a cooler for every seat on the bus almost, so uh, <laughs> thank you for responding uh, in a good way for that, all right? Um, anybody, uh, do you have the CDs back there, fellas, from this morning? Good. Anybody not here this morning, we gave a CD out to all the ladies, and if you weren't here, we'd like you to have one. Okay, uh, for a good song, just put your hand up in the air. The usher's coming; he'll get you one. And uh, work both sides there, Dave, if you would. And we'll make sure you have the CD to listen to. And I think you'll enjoy that. All right. Very good. All right. Now we'll take a moment, and uh, by the way, remember, those of you who might not be here Wednesday night, uh, remember Saturday morning at 9 a.m., all right? 9 a.m., we'll gather here, get some final instructions, have some prayer time together, and then we'll begin to get things set up. Uh, the inflatables and all those things are due to arrive at 11, and we're due to open up at noon, all right? So uh, we wanna, you want to get you, whatever game you're assigned to, we'll get to your spot and get that set up and, and answer any questions you have about how it works, how to award the prizes, all that kind of stuff, so you'll know exactly what you're doing, and uh, we'll get all that together uh, first thing on Saturday morning. All right? Okay, and pray for a good day. Uh, of weather, all right, and uh, the rain can stay away, uh, and well, God will give us a good afternoon, all right? Okay. Now, let's take a moment. We'll welcome any guests that are with us in the service tonight. Heather is here, and I think you brought, this would be your husband, I believe. Is that right? Who is this, Heather? Jason? Okay. Jason, good to have you tonight. Thank you for coming. Glad you, glad you made it to the service this evening. Usher's going to hand you a card to fill out, and Jason, you'll be kind enough to fill that out. And then a little bit, we have the offering. Just put that card in the plate if you would. And keep the pen as our gift to you for coming. We're glad you're here. That's great. Give him a warm welcome, shall we?
78 in your hymnal 7 8 sing the wondrous love of jesus sing his mercy and his grace when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be number seven eight together on that first sing the wondrous love of jesus sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all Turn with me to 492. 492. Jesus Christ has made to me all I need, all I need. Let's all stand together one more time as we sing. On that first together. Jesus Christ is made to me all I need. He alone is all my plea. Sing that second. He redeemed me when he died. He redeemed me. Men, I with him was crucified. He is all I need. All together now. Wisdom, righteousness, and power. Holiness is very. Let's start that third together. He's the treasure of my soul. All I need, all I need, ladies. All together now. Wisdom, righteousness, and power. Holiness is very Amen. Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together.
Jesus Christ is made to me. All I need, all I need, He alone is all my plea. He is all I need. Wisdom, righteousness, and power, holiness, this very hour. My redemption, full and free, He is all I need. Let's sing that fourth all together. Jesus is my all in all. All I need, all I need. Let's sing that together. Jesus is my all in all. All I need, while he keeps, I cannot fall. He is all I need. Wisdom, righteousness, and power, holiness, this very hour, my redemption, full and free, he is all I need. Glory, glory to the Lamb, glory, glory to the Lamb, all I need, all I need, by his spirit sealed I am. and be seated if you will ushers will come and receive our offering tonight give us the Lord has blessed and prospered you and uh, appreciate your faithful giving and uh, let's ask God's blessing on our offering tonight and uh, we'll pray brother Andy lead us in prayer please let's pray God once again what a privilege to be in your house tonight with other believers and we just pray that you bless this offering right now be with each gift and each giver alike. Help us to give cheerfully, knowing that we're giving to your work, God, and we can never outgive you. We know that truth, Lord. Prepare our hearts now for the opening of the Word of God and the preaching of the Word of God to come. And we'll thank you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, James chapter 4, James chapter 4. <clears throat> I'd like us to read two verses together this evening, verses 13 and 14. James 4 and verses 13 and 14, to read those together in unison. And as our custom is, let's stand together for the reading of the Scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's Word. And let's begin together on verse number 13 of James chapter 4. Ready? Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. 
whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of the Scripture now this evening. Father, we thank you again for the Word of God and for preserving your Word that we might have copies of it in our hand tonight. Lord, I pray that you would help us to give our undivided attention uh, to your Word and the truth of your Word. Lord, tune our hearts to your heart. Give us a desire to want to hear from you this evening. Bless the special now to that end, please. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. It matters so little how much you may own. The places you've been or the people you've known. For it all comes to nothing when placed at his feet. It's nothing to Jesus, just memories to keep. Only one life so soon it will pass only what's done for Christ will last only one chance to do his will so give to Jesus all your days it's the only life that pays when you recall you have but one life. You may take all the treasures from far away land. Take all the riches you can hold in your hands. And take all the pleasures your money can buy. But what will you have when it's your turn to die? The days pass so swiftly, the months come and go. The years melt away like fallen snow. Spring turns to summer, summer to fall. Autumn brings winter, then death comes to call. Only one life, so soon it will pass. Only what's done for Christ will Jesus, all your days, it's the only life that pays. When you recall, you have one but life. So give to Jesus all your days, it's the only life that pays. When you you have but one life. That's good. Now, Heavenly Father, we bow in prayer as we open up your word tonight for the preaching of the word of God. Lord, I pray that you would help us to give you our undivided attention this evening that you would be able to speak to each of our hearts. Move up and down the aisles and move in and out of the rows and minister to the people of God that are here this evening. May holy decisions be made that 
we would make our life count for thee. For only one life, so soon it will pass. And only what's done for Christ will last. So put that truth and stamp it upon our hearts tonight. And I'll thank you for it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> C.T. Studd was a missionary to both China and India in the late 1800s, in the early 1900s. And he stated, by the way, C.T. Studd was the one who stated that some want to live within the sound of a church or of a church bell. He said, I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. That was C.T. Studd. But it was C.T. Studd who penned the words, Only one life, so soon it will pass, and only what's done for Christ will last. He's the one who wrote the poem that Nikki just sang. He didn't put the music to it, but he wrote the words to it. That one phrase, Only one life, so soon it will pass, and only what's done for Christ will last. That pretty much sums up what ought to be the goal and the purpose of a Christian's life. Maybe you've heard it before, but we're going to ponder that phrase a little bit this, this evening to take a phrase from Brother Wallace. We're going to ponder on that for a while. And maybe that's West Virginia talk, I don't know. But only one life. Let's take that to begin with. Only one life. That means that our life is single. The first modern missionary was Adoniram Judson, and he said this, You have but one life in which to prepare for eternity. If you had four or five lives, two, of them, two or three of them might be able to be wasted in frivolity or carelessness. But you have only one. And every action of that one life will give an influence to your eternity. And how important it is then to spend that life pleasing the Savior. But if this is the only life, listen, if this is the only life you're ever going to have, and trust me, it is, then God help us to make it count for eternity. Then God help us to live our life for things that count. I don't want to succeed in life at something that will not matter at all in eternity. For that would be a waste. I read of a pastor who went to visit an old man who lived his whole life in sin and selfishness. Finally, in his late 60s, he had contracted cancer, and he trusted the Lord as his Savior. The pastor went to visit him at his home shortly before his death. And as he chatted with the man that day, the, he was, the pastor said the man was in somewhat of a reminiscent mood. But he didn't hear stories about the good old days. Instead, the pastor said it was more like a confessional. The old man shared with the pastor how before he came to the Lord, he neglected his family for his job. He'd not been there for his children like he should have been there. He had not trained up his children in the ways of the Lord or even with any real character. He had missed out on so many opportunities that he had to make his life count for God or for good. Instead, he lived for sin and he lived for pleasure and he lived for popularity. He lived for accumulating material things. And the pastor said he could recall that during the conversation, the man would just suddenly at times grow very quiet. And sensing some inner struggle, the pastor said he too would just sit silently waiting for the man's next words. Not saying anything because frankly he said he wasn't sure what to say. After a few moments, the man looked away from the pastor. And the pastor saw him wipe a tear away from his eye. And he said these words. He said, I sure wish that I could live my life over again. And that may be true of some people listening to me tonight. But the fact is, you can't live your life over again. 
Our lives are single. You only have one life, and then it's over. One life. Secondly, it says only one life will soon be passed, or so soon it will pass. And that reminds us that our life is short. It's amazing that we don't talk more about this because the Bible certainly does. It talks about the brevity of life and how quickly it passes. In fact, let's listen to some things that the Bible compares our life to. Would you, would you look at it with me? When our text tonight, the, in James 4 and verse 14, notice what the Bible says. Wherefore, you know not what shall be in the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a what, church? It's a vapor that appears for a little while, then vanisheth away. It's, it's just the, the, it used to be before you had microwaves and you stuck your cup in there and you had instant, you know, coffee or cocoa, whatever you're going to make, you would put a, a teapot or a kettle, tea kettle on the stove. Remember, and that little thing, little top of it, when it, when it got hot, it would whistle at you. How many of you had those? They, you know, and then you know, well, it's ready. And you know, when it would whistle, steam would come out of there, wouldn't it? You'd see the steam. For how long? Not very long. Just that quick. It's gone. You know what God says? Our lives are like that. You don't think it goes by quickly? It goes by quick. Then God said in Psalm 103, verses 15 and 16, As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. Saying it's just like grass and flowers that are here for a short time, and then they, then they go away. We see it this time of year in the springtime. You can travel so down some of the back roads and you'll see wildflowers growing beside the road. But you just uh, wait a few weeks, you won't see them anymore. They're gone just that quick. As beautiful and as pretty as they are. Their lifespan is only very, very short. In Job, God says our lives are like a shadow. Man that is born of woman is a few days. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Go out and stand in the, in the sunshine and look at with the shadow that it casts and realize your shadow is not going to be there very long. The sun is going to change positions or you're going to change positions and your shadow isn't going to be there very long. The, the sun is going to move and your shadow will change. Then another way the psalmist said, our lives are compared to a story. In Psalm 90 and verse 9, all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. He said, it's just like reading a story. Now, how quickly, sometimes you could sit down. Uh, my wife was handed a book the other day, and I think she said it was 192 pages. Does that sound about right? And, and she read that in one night. She read that story. It was an interesting story about, I think, uh, was it Muslim? In Pakistani, a Pakistani girl? And, and, and she read that just like a story. Some of you have done larger reading than that. If you can read three million pages in an hour like my daughter-in-law, uh, she would read three of those books a night. She's a, she can read a speed reader, and, and, she, and by the way, she knows what she read. That's what's scary about it all. But, uh, you know, if your life's a story and she's reading it, buddy, it's really going fast, all right? In Psalm again, in Psalms again, he says, Our lives are like a wind that passes by. In Job 7 and verse 6, he says, Our lives are like a weaver's shuttle. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, he says. And, and by the way, they say a weaver's shuttle can make a complete rotation in about one second. Again, God is just emphasizing over and over again how quickly our lives pass, how quickly time goes by. I know that, listen, some of you may be in the room, and, and in fact, we were just back in the office, and um, uh, Andy was looking at a brochure of a youth conference, and he says, uh, what was that guy's name? Robertson? Sammy? Sammy Robertson? Sammy Robertson goes, man, wait, I was in college with that guy. I, we were freshmen in college with that guy. I said, Andy, that was 15 years ago. Isaac, come up here. Isaac, are you six? How old are you? You're seven now? You just had a birthday, didn't you? 
Yeah, come on. Just turned seven. He was, Isaac was negative three when we came here. Okay? All right. Zach, you 16? You're 17. Yeah. Ten years ago when I came, this was Zach Anderson. We have pictures. You were about just like this. Now look at Zach, 17 and finishing up his junior year of high school. Is that right? Ready to be a senior? Man, time goes quick. Huh? Some of you, if, if, you're, if you're past 40, you know what I'm talking about. You, you wonder, man, where did, the, where did those years go? Some of your mothers today are looking at your children and say, man, wait a minute, where did those years go? All right, thanks, Isaac. Good job. It'll go quickly, won't it? It goes by so quickly. The bottom line is our lives are short. Our lives are short. In every instance and illustration the Bible gives with, uh, with life, it always includes the reference that it's short. And it isn't going to last very long. And we're only here for a very short amount of time. It said that the army of Xerxes that led Greece in 480 B.C. consisted of 1,700,000 men besides an enormous fleet. When Xerxes looked over his vast forces from a prominent point, the port below was covered with his ships and the plains were filled with his troops from different nations. He turned to his uncle, one of his commanders, and told him he was very happy with what he saw. But after a few moments, his brother looked over and Xerxes was weeping. And his uncle said, why are you weeping? You're surrounded by so much glory. And he said, I weep because this vast crowd that is arrayed before me, not one individual in it will be living in a hundred years. It finally, the realization came how quickly all this will be over. How quickly this will come to an end. In light of eternity, in light of eternity, our, our, our life is but a vapor. It's just a, a short amount of time. When I was in high school, I remember a fellow coming in and talking to us in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and he was talking to us, and he took out a pencil, and he held that pencil up in the air, and you know how the eraser is at the end of a pencil? He said, you know, you, you, it's really, it, 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 you know, if you picture eternity as the, 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 the pencil, your life would be just like that little eraser on the end of it. Now, eternity doesn't have any end. We understand that. But do you understand how, how small that is compared to eternity? And yet we spend all our time focusing on that little itty-bitty part and neglect eternity. Your life is single. It's the only one you get. It's the only one you have. It's the only one any of us have. And so soon it will pass. So soon it will pass. Life is short. Number three, only what's done for Christ will last. Only what's done for Christ will last. That reminds us our life is serious. Our life is single. Our life is short. And our life has to be serious. Someone said, we're not here to play, to dream, or to drift. We have hard work to do and loads to lift. That's true. Life is serious, yet there's so many people that are on this earth and they have no idea why they're here. No idea why they're on the earth. There's a story about the notoriously absent-minded Dwight Morrow. He was a distinguished American lawyer, banker, and diplomat in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and one time getting off a train in New York City, he rushed to the telegraph office and wired to his secretary, why am I in New York? What am I supposed to do? Think about that. One of the America's premier business and legal leaders at the time, getting off a train to New York, having no clue what he was there for. His secretary promptly wired him back, you're on your way to Princeton to deliver a lecture, hurry up. And so he left. But you know, you can say, man, how can anybody be that way? Hey, there's millions of people in America 
there's millions of people in this world who are living here and they have no idea why they're here. What am I here for? What's, what, what, what's my existence? What, what, what am I supposed to be doing while I'm here? What's my life all about anyway? You know, it's interesting how often the, the Bible compares people to sheep. But I'm told if you watch sheep for a while, you would know why the Bible likens us so much to sheep. Sheep, by their nature, only live for the moment. Their line of vision is never any further than the next clump of grass. They chew a clump and then they'll go on to the next clump. And that's why sheep, it's so easy for them to go astray because that's all they're looking for is the next clump and they'll go from clump to the next clump to the next clump. Before you know it, they'll wander away. Without a shepherd, they wander off with no direction and no purpose they wander away. People are like that. So how are people like that? You know what we do? We live for the next clump of pleasure, the next clump of excitement, the next clump of material possession, the next thing we can get or attain, and we just go from one thing to another thing to another thing, trying to find satisfaction. And before we know it, we, we don't have direction, we don't have purpose, we don't know what we're doing, and we don't have anywhere we're going, and life isn't fulfilling, and life isn't satisfying, and wonder, what, what's this all about anyway? There's no purpose to it. But the Bible tells us why we're here. The Bible makes it clear why we're occupying this earth. And the truth of the matter is, we are here, and we were created, the Bible tells us, for God's glory. You say, what does that mean? It means we're created to please Him. We're created to glory means to bring a good opinion of. Why are you here? I'm here to, listen, you're here and I'm here to get people to have a good opinion of God. That they'll think well of God because they've known us. That's bringing glory to God. See, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When we're born in this world, we're all born sinners. As by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We're all born sinners. You don't have to ever teach a child how to do wrong. You don't have to teach a child to be selfish. You don't have to teach a child to want his own way. You know why? That's in him already, isn't it? See? And you have to teach them... To, to share. You have to teach them to listen. You have to teach them to do what you want them to do. Otherwise, they just want to do what they want to do. Because we're born with that sin nature. We're not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. Because of what we are. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, He paid the penalty for sin. The penalty for sin was death and hell. And Jesus paid that penalty for us when He died on the cross. He took our sins and our sorrows, the songwriter said, and He made them His very own. All our iniquities on Him were laid, and He nailed them all to the tree. And He died for me, and He died for you. He died for my sin, and He died for your sin. Jesus Christ was buried and put in that tomb and three days later up from the grave he arose we just celebrated that a few weeks ago with the resurrection and Easter and listen and 40 days later he ascended back to the, to the right hand of God where the Bible says he ever lives to make intercession for us now listen that, that's why Jesus Christ rose from the dead uh, living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justifies freely forever and one day he's coming oh glorious day listen he, 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 he is alive that's why he can save all that come unto God by him you're not calling on someone dead to save you he couldn't save you you have to have someone alive and he conquered death and you won't have to die and be in your sin and you don't have to be a slave to your sin. You can have your sins forgiven, and you can live a life that honors God. But it's Jesus Christ in you. 
when you receive Christ your Savior, the Bible says you receive Christ by faith, and by faith, He's in your heart. He's in the core of your being. And that's why Paul said that it's Christ that liveth in me. And that's how I live for God. And by the way, that's how you glorify God. Then the Bible says, now that you're a Christian, now that you've received Christ as your Savior, whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's why we're here. We are created for His pleasure, for His glory. And, and that we would live to the praise of His glory. So uh, when, no matter what we do, we're to bring glory to Him. That's why give God glory is our theme for our 60th anniversary. The Bible Baptist Church is here for one reason. We're here to make God look good. We're here to put God in a good light. So people to think well of our Savior and well of our God. And when you receive Christ your Savior and you begin to submit to Him and you let Him live through you and you live to do what He wants and what He says and what He feels, what He thinks and not what you want and what you feel and what you think and you're allowing Him to control you, you bring glory to God. And there's fulfillment, and there's happiness, and there's enjoyment. Something that, listen, going from clump to clump to clump is never going to give you. You're, you're not going to be satisfied. You're not going to be happy. You, you, can, you can attain everything you want to attain. You can have all the possessions you want to have. You can gather all the money you want to have. It will not satisfy you. We talked to Friday night in RU and from the book of Ecclesiastes that said, uh, he that, that, that will be satisfied, he that desires silver will never be satisfied with silver. You, you can desire things and you can desire money. You'll never be satisfied with money. I've heard many Christians sing like we did tonight, Jesus Christ is all I need, all I need. And I'm satisfied with Jesus. I've never heard any millionaire say I'm satisfied with money. You don't hear him sing that. No, Mr. Rockefeller, how much money's enough? He said, just a dollar more. Just a little bit more. Always want a little more. Always want something else. Always want something different. Our time is to be spent serving God. Our time is to be spent doing His will for our life, following the path that He would have us to live. Time is given to us to be used at God, in God's service, for it's precious and it's short and it's passing, and then it's gone. The clock of life is wound but once, and no man has the power to say just when the hands will stop, at late or early hour. Now is the only time we own to do His precious will. Don't wait till tomorrow, for the clock may then be still. I was saddened this morning to get on the computer, read of the death of two young police officers in Mississippi, simply pulling over somebody at a traffic stop. And they're gunned down in cold blood. Couldn't help but think. Kind of a Mother's Day those wives had. Kind of a Mother's Day their moms had. How tragic. But my friend, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. Don't boast yourself of tomorrow, the Bible says. You don't know what a day will bring forth. Paul said in Philippians 1 and verse 21, most of you know it, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And the question that all of us would have to answer when we look at that verse would say, what would I say to that? How would I fill in that blank? For me to live is, what do I put there? For me to live is my job. For me to live is my family. For me to live is pleasure. For me to live is money. For me to live is popularity. For me to live is being accepted by others. For me to live is material things. If any of those things are true, and listen, only you know what's true in your life. But if any of those things are true, you cannot say the second part of that verse. To die is gain. 
The only way the second part is true is if the first part's true. The only way dying is gain is if living is for Christ. Then certainly to die is to gain. Because if any of the former are true, then to die is, is really loss in a sense. Live your life with such a commitment to God, such a commitment to Jesus Christ, a surrendering to His will, a submission to live as He says to live, so that you honestly from your heart could say, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Your life is single. Your life is short. Your life must be serious. You know, I really, I really sense that we don't grasp the day in which we live. I really think we're, 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 we are fulfilling the Scripture that Jesus said, that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, there are things that we ought to be seeing and things we ought to be observing and things that we ought to be aware of. And instead, he said, you know what we're doing? We're eating, we're drinking, we're marrying, we're giving in marriage. We're just life going on as usual. Oh, a couple thousand Christians got beheaded. Oh, well. Uh, hey, who won the game today? Oh, what, what did... Uh, uh, who is it over there in England? Uh, Prince somebody and uh, just had a baby, you know. Oh, what they have a baby? We're all caught up in things, and 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 we're listen. We just by the by the grace of God and the bravery of a police officer in Garland, Texas, avoided a real massacre that would have been on American soil. Most people don't even aren't even aware anything happened. We're, 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 we're missing something. Stephen Olford is a pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in New York City, and he relates the story how he was influenced by that statement, we're considering tonight only one life, so soon it will pass, only what's done for Christ will last. He says, my parents were missionaries in, in Angola. I was born in Africa. At an early age, I was saved. But the day came when I went to Britain to study to be an engineer. And little by little, I drifted away from my Christian faith. But he said, one night I had a motorcycle accident and was taken to a hospital where the doctors held out little hope for my recovery. At the time, my parents were still in Africa, and they did not even know what I was going through. But he said, one day I received a letter from him in which it said, my son... Of most importance is this fact. And here's what his father wrote in that letter. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. He said, the words hit me like a hammer blow. I was shattered. I could see my life before my maker as a shriveled up piece of waste. With my father's words echoing in my soul, I capitulated. I just looked into the face of my Lord by faith and said, I give in. No more rebellion. I've been a fool. I've tried to run my own life. I've made an awful mess of it. I want to come back to you. If you would receive me. I turn in humility and repentance. And he says, as I knelt in the presence of God, a wonderful peace came into my heart. I yielded my life to Him and said, Lord Jesus, I want You to take the reins of my life. I want You to be supremely sovereign in my life. And He did. Not only did God meet me in my deep spiritual need, He also healed me. And in three weeks' time, I was on my feet again. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. If that's true, and I believe it is, then what should you do about it? What are you going to do about it? 
Well, first of all, if you're not saved, if you've never received Christ your Savior, I'd get saved right away. I would not delay. I would not put it off. One thing the Bible is very clear on, and that is anybody that we ever see in the Bible that put off the matter of salvation never did get saved. The Bible makes it clear, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to be saved. Don't boast yourself of tomorrow. You don't know what a day will bring forth. We do not know. I don't know if you'll have another opportunity to be saved but I know you'll never have a better opportunity than you have right now to receive Christ as your Savior. If you are a believer and you have received Christ, then maybe you need to make some realignment in your life to make sure that it's counting for Christ, to make sure that it's going to make a difference in eternity, that you're living with eternal values in view. What changes do you need to make? What what priorities do you need to reset in your life? Maybe it's spend less time in front of the television and more time in the Bible. Maybe you need to begin to share Christ with your friends and your neighbors and your co-workers. Maybe you need to make sure that you take uh, 50 or 100 flyers and say every day I'm going to pass out at least 100 flyers this week. That would, and by the way, you, you can do that in under an hour's time. Under an hour's time and just do that every day. Maybe there's a bad habit you need to give to God. Maybe you need to spend more time with your spouse or your children. You can never take your career to heaven, but you can take your family with you to heaven. Remember, only one life, so soon it will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Let's not spend our lives doing things and, and excelling at things that will not matter for eternity. Let's make it count for Christ. Amen? Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for these words that were penned by C.T. Studd well over 100 years ago. Powerful words. Thank you for the words of the Apostle Paul that you gave to him in Philippians 1, that for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Lord, I pray that there'd be a, a group of people at 2758 Home Road in Grove City, Ohio, that would be able to say, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And Lord, it wouldn't be something we say, but it's something that we live. That we would determine to live our lives for your glory. That we would not be concerned about making ourselves look good. We'd be concerned about the fact that you would look good. Oh God, forgive us for our selfish lives. Help us to live under the one who loved us and gave himself for us. I pray for any in the room tonight, Lord, who's never received Christ as their Savior, that today would be the day that they would come to know him, to know Jesus, whom to know is to have eternal life. And help each of us to dedicate ourselves fresh and anew to live for Christ and to make this single life this short life a serious life where we're focused living for Jesus heads are bowed and eyes are closed I'll finish the prayer in just a moment right now nobody looking just between you and God I wonder how many folks here tonight would say pastor I I realized at some point in my life that I was a sinner who needed a Savior and that Jesus was a Savior I needed. And there's a time when I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And Pastor, I know tonight that I'm saved. I know tonight that if I died, I'd go to heaven. 
I have eternal life. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip up for a moment? All right, you may put it down. You're here tonight and would say, Pastor, I, I'm not sure about that. I don't, I don't know that there's ever been a time in my life when I've received Christ as my Savior. Would you let me pray for you? No one's going to embarrass you. No one will call you out, but I will pray for you. Would you slip your hand up and put it back down and just say, pray for me? God bless you. God bless you. That's not a decision you want to put off. You want to wait. You want to take care of it. I wonder how many believers here this evening, those who know Christ your Savior, would say, Preacher, God has dealt with my heart tonight. I realize I have a single life. I realize that I have a short life. And I realize, Lord, it must be, tonight it must be a serious life for the Lord. God spoke to my heart tonight, Pastor. I want my life to count for Christ. Please pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may put them down. Some of you this evening in your 50s, 60s. Some of you may be past 70. And we know we're in the fourth quarter of life. I don't know about you, but I want to finish well. I want to finish faithful. I want to make whatever years God gives me that I have left, and I want to make them count for Christ. I hope you'll want to do the same. But we need young people to say, I want to burn my whole candle for God. I want to burn my whole life for Jesus Christ. There's only one life, so soon it will pass. And only what's done for Christ will last. I'm going to pray. And Christian, God has spoken to your heart. You respond and come and kneel at the altar. Do business with God. If you're here tonight and you slipped your hand up, when other Christians step, slip out to pray, would you come? And you, weren't, you're, you're, you raised your hand and said, I'm not sure if I died I'd go to heaven. I don't think I've ever accepted Christ my Savior. We have people who've been trained. They'll take a Bible and they'll show you how you can receive God's gift of eternal life. Oh, go home tonight with that gift. Don't, don't leave without it. You respond when the others come. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts tonight. Lord, I pray that you'll help each one to do what you've bidden them to do in their heart. That your will will be done in these next few moments of invitation time. I pray for these in the room who have never received Christ as their Savior, that tonight would be the night that they would settle their eternity. And they would leave the room tonight saying, now I can glorify God with my life. Now I understand why I'm here and what I need to do with my life. I'm here to glorify God. I'm here to make God look good. Lord, help the other believers to come and bow the knee. And give us a great group of Christians here that will say, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Have your way in every heart and life, please, and may we respond to what you're telling us to do. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. Nikki's going to sing the song she sang earlier, Only One Life. I want you to respond to what the Lord's told you to do. You come. It matters so little How much you may owe The places you bear for the people you've known For it all comes to nothing When placed at His feet It's nothing to Jesus Just memories to keep Only one life So soon Pass. Only what's done for 
is dealing with him for salvation and uh, how exciting is that Jeannie Jeannie comes to the Lord and then gets sister sister accepts Christ as her savior and now husband is getting saved Anthony's been saved I know Anthony. I'm gonna leave you out buddy and uh, God's doing some great things in that family isn't he and uh, it's great to see great to see hey you know what uh, Jeannie came because of turkey dinner Sunday uh, she didn't get to come that Sunday she called and missed out on it but we took her a plate of food and uh, she started coming to church there's other genie Nances out there in the world is that scary no it isn't uh, but you know what I mean there are others out there like that uh, the Abrams came because of a special day and, uh, you know, that's why we have like days like we're going to have on Saturday. Uh, there's going to be folks come and, and they're going to be here. And we're going to pray that they'll have opportunity to, to we're going to give the gospel to them and pray that we'll have many folks saved that day. And uh, it's going to be an exciting, exciting time. So uh, we'll, we'll pray and uh, let Bob deal with Jason and be complete and thorough with him. And uh, how exciting that is. Man, Heather, I'm, I'm thrilled for you. That's great. Great, great changes. Great changes coming in your life. It's great. Amen. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you, God, for so great salvation that you provided for us through Jesus Christ. Thank you that it's by grace alone, through faith alone. So it's to God alone be the glory. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for our church family. Lord, we need your help this week now. We need extra grace extra strength we need your blessing as we go after getting these flyers out and lord we're going to put forth the effort you said you could reward us according to our labor and i pray lord that we would all labor our best for thee yes. give it everything we have for you to bless in a great way on saturday lord i pray you'll help our bus tomorrow to pass that inspection yes. lord reward all the hard work and the labor that has gone into that bus and I pray, God, that there'll be a great, great crowd of folks come to the fair riding that bus on Saturday. Father, we love you. We thank you for a good day today. We pray that you'll dismiss us now with your care. Lord, make us mindful you go with us and help us to be about your business this week. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. 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 Let's sing It's a Grand Thing to Be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. 
Uh, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>